The concept of strategic bombing began in World War II. Unlike tactical or attack bombers, strategic bombers are used to take out high-value enemy targets, including infrastructure, logistics, and military installations. This concept was developed through trial and error by the U.S. Army Air Forces using the B-17 and B-24 bombers against the German forces from 1943 to 1945. This later evolved into the theory of daylight precision bombing. The theory rejected the strategy of bombing broad areas and focused on specific targets of military significance. A benefit of precision bombing is avoiding civilian casualties and limiting collateral damage. The B-29 Super Fortress would become one of the first aircraft to utilize this strategy. The development of the B-29, with its increased range and ability to carry nuclear weapons, helped bring about the end of World War II when it was used in the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The B-29 returned to combat during the conflict in Korea in June 1950. Classification of strategic bombers depends on several factors, including the aircraft's size, range, and load-carrying ability. After World War II, the Air Force needed a strategic bomber with intercontinental range, so they contracted Consolidated Volte to design the B-36 Peacemaker. In 1946, the aircraft started to be used in many different ways. The B-36, the first genuine intercontinental bomber. Some B-36s served as photographic reconnaissance aircraft, and others were adapted to launch and retrieve specially modified reconnaissance planes. The B-36 is powered by six Pratt & Whitney engines with a maximum speed of 435 miles per hour, and it carried 86,000 pounds of nuclear or conventional bombs. Although the bomber never saw combat or dropped bombs on an enemy target, its role as a reconnaissance aircraft and strategic messaging tool was vital to the success of the Cold War. The B-47 Stratajet was built to replace the aging B-36, which had since become obsolete. The B-47 has a turbojet engine designed to fly at high speeds and altitudes, avoiding interceptor aircraft. It incorporated many advanced features for the time, including swept wings, jet engines and underwing pods, and automated systems that reduced the crew size to three. Three people who will make this piece of machinery a powerful tactical weapon. Due to the aircraft's inability to operate as efficiently at lower altitudes, the B-47 was retired after only 10 years and the B-58 Hustler was introduced. The B-58 was capable of flying at supersonic speeds. The Air Force had become landlord of the fastest bomber in the world. In 1963, it flew 8,028 miles from Tokyo to London in 8 hours and 35 minutes, an average of 938 miles per hour. The Air Force's current active inventory of strategic bombers include the B-1 Lancer, B-2 Spirit, and the B-52 Stratofortress. The B-1 is capable of carrying the largest conventional payload of both guided and unguided weapons in the Air Force's inventory. Comparatively, the B-2 utilizes stealth and aerodynamic technology, while the B-52 is capable of flying at high subsonic speeds at altitudes up to 50,000 feet and launching the largest array of weapons. Over the course of 60 years, the bomber completed more than 100,000 sorties. This is Navigator, coming up on EIP in one minute. In addition to supporting ground tactical operations, B-52s were used to interdict enemy supply lines in Vietnam and Cambodia. The Stratofortress could neither be seen nor heard from the ground as they released their bombs. Updates to the B-52 will extend its lifespan beyond 2040 solidifying its role as the backbone of the Air Force's manned strategic bomber force.